Okay, so thank you very much for taking the time to join our presentation. Uh, my name's John Rigler, and both myself and my colleague Chirag Patel, we are solutions consultants at OpenText, and we work on the Magellan software technology. The presentation today is a, about a system of insights, and uh, we're trying to actually not so much present, but more demo. So we're aiming at uh, mostly demonstration, with just a few slides for positioning at the, at the beginning. So uh, a sy system of insights really is uh, considered to be three main functions. And there are a few different variations of, of it on, in the market. But it, it's a closed loop system. And we're looking at uh, covering all these aspects. So you've got the, the system of record. And that's more based on your transactional systems. So regardless of what business, uh, you're going to have something maybe order processing data. So it tends to be very structured um, database information. Then you've got the system of engagement, and that's where you interact with your customers or your clients. That tends to be a lot more unstructured information, so that could be email communications, transcripts of information going into a call center, um, email uh, data filled out on web pages, et cetera. And then the system of automation is uh, where your analysts, uh, where your business can interact with, with all of this information. So the first thing uh, for the system of insight is to actually identify uh, something to improve, something that is not uh, what was expected. Uh, we're looking at having access to all of that information underneath. So decisions made on knowledge with good experience are clearly what benefits um, a business. So the, the knowledge is these two areas at the bottom there, these two sets of information that's available within the business. The experience, obviously, is your actual employees, uh, the people within the business that understand how everything functions. A allowing them to have access to all this knowledge is what's going to increase the skill set and the capability of being able to make decisions and put into place actions that can then be followed up on. So your first thing is you need to look for a signal in the data. Um, and we have a number of ways that can happen. And again, depending on the skill set, so for every user, it could be an information dashboard where they're going to be able to navigate through all of this information and make a discovery. It might be finding something that uh, isn't expected and they want to correct, or it might be spotting an opportunity. But the idea is that uh, they're looking for something within the information to kick this off. Once they've observed something, uh, and we'll show all of this in the demonstration, you're then looking at how to sort of automate the, a process, how to actually make an action. So is that to put in something into monitoring in place so that you can look out for that thing in the future? Or is it uh, perhaps to uh, you've identified an opportunity, therefore you want to put into place uh, a campaign or something to actually take advantage of that situation? Now, once you've put the, the action into place, uh, you're then going to be wanting to see, did you achieve the outcome? So again, using the same capabilities, so the same information dashboards, we can allow the business users to interact, look to see, did it achieve what they expected? Does it need some tweaking? Um, should, it, should it be scrapped and start again? So you're looking at uh, using the same modules to actually be able to understand better the outcome. And then finally, you're going to continuously do this. Uh, you've got to improve over time. You can specify if it's, for example, an algorithm that you're looking at. You can give it a, a time, a shelf life, or you can give it criteria to say, only when you, your results are within this particular range is it valid. So things can expire over time, and then you need to, to, to reevaluate them. OK, so. Uh, Shirag is going to, he doesn't have different hats up here to change, so he can tell you which uh, role he's playing. But in order to, to do this little demonstration, we need to uh, assume certain capabilities. So regular business users, these are the types of people which are going to be using the BI interface. So that's your dashboards and so on. Slightly more skilled users, um, those are the ones that could use the data discovery tool. And the solution Magellan is a single entity solution that covers the whole area. So whereas often 
you need to use lots of different technologies to deliver this kind of application. We're looking at using all of the technology within one solution. And then finally, if you do have data scientists uh, in the demonstration, Shirag will show you their interface as well. But essentially, these are all working together. One pushes something into the other layer so that everybody can take advantage of it. So with that, I'll hand over to Shirag for the demonstration. Thank you. So as John said, we want to try and make this more demo rather than pitching lots of different slides to you all. So, uh, so John talked about signals, which is the first part of the system of in insights. And here we're in the Magellan um, data, dis sorry, the BI and reporting platform. So there's multiple modules within the Magellan AI and analytics platform. And here we're just looking at your traditional sort of business intelligence uh, s side of things. So this is a dashboard showing revenue by year uh, for a wealth management company. And we can see uh, revenues by four different product categories um, on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we can see the same sort of data for our nearest competitor. So we want to keep track of our nearest competitor so we know how we're, we're performing um, versus them in each of these different categories. So I'm taking the role of a marketing analyst right now and my focus is in this investment category, the orange line. And we can see that our revenues have, oops, our revenues have actually been steadily increasing year on year, which is great. Um, all of this is interactive, so I can drill into the investment category and get a, a deeper insight into the products within the investment category to see how they've each been performing as well. And what I can see is the majority of our products have actually performed pretty well year on year, but the orange line here, the investment ISA product and in indiv individual savings account has actually started to decline in the last two years in revenue. And quite worryingly, we can see that our nearest competitor's revenue for the same product, the orange line here, has actually been increasing. So we've got our signal, it's, it's telling us that there's something wrong um, and we want to try to understand what we need to do about it and also what is going wrong. So we can head over to our marketing dashboard here where we can see the spend for our marketing across our different products. Again, we, we can see um, the investment category uh, is the orange line. If I delve into this and, um, and look at the products within the investment category, I can see that the orange line here, the investment ISAs, we've actually been increasing our spend on marketing for this product category. So whilst we've actually seen decreasing revenue, our investment um, into our marketing has actually been going up year on year, which is not what you would expect. Also our funnels, our marketing funnels on the right hand side, we've got our investment category as a whole and we've got our investment ISA products on the right hand side. And you can see that we've been converting 0.7 of our leads to wins for the investment category as a whole. But for the ISA product, we've only been converting 0.2%. So there's more than a three magnitude uh, difference there. So again, we want to try to understand what's happening here. So we spoke to our data scientist uh, who wears a different hat. And he suggested that what we could use here is a recommendation engine. So using some machine learning to analyze um, customer data to understand uh, which products we should be recommending to our customers. So for that, we go over to the Magellan Notebook, which is a data scientist tool where a data scientist can go in and code in whatever language they're familiar with, whether it's R, Scala, Java, SQL. In this case, um, our data scientist has used Python for Spark. So he's created a recommendation engine using something called collaborative filtering. So collaborative filtering uses a similar sort of methodology to what Amazon and uh, Netflix use to look at existing products that customers have right now and determining uh, which products they should, rec they should be recommended on that basis. So um, using Python, you can see that this uh, notebook that isn't just code, it's code, it's rich text. We also have charts here as well so you can visualize the data and, and various different outputs. Now once the um, machine learning model has been created, he's testing the uh, data and he produces a final model which is using ALS, the alternating least squares in this instance. The final part of this is then to publish the model. Now the idea of publishing a machine learning model is that rather than a data scientist having access to the machine learning model who, who understands the code, we want to make it accessible to a business user like myself as a marketing analyst. So once we publish this model, we can head over to another part of Magellan, which is the data discovery module. 
Now in a data discovery module, this is a, uh, an environment that a business user or a knowledge worker, someone like myself, a marketing analyst can use, uh, which is just purely drag and drop. Uh, so you can take data, you can drag it and you can drop it and it analyzes it for you or, or you can start to see patterns in your data. Now I've got all of these different various uh, machine learning models that the data scientist has actually published for me before. So I've got my recommendation one here on the right hand side. Now rather than seeing lines of code, all I see is a very simple box that I need to input three columns of data into here, which I've got on the left hand side here. So I can just drag my customer offers data and it's gonna populate the columns uh, that are required as part of that machine learning model. So what I'm actually doing here is I've got the machine learning model and I'm able to run the machine learning model using whatever up-to-date data that I have available to me. I'm not reliant on my data scientists, I'm not burdening my data scientists with additional work that I can really do very easily myself. So I want to save the output of the machine learning model to a new table and I'm going to call it uh, recommend ISA. So if I now execute this, uh, this is running in the top right here, or tell me once it's done. So it's running the most up-to-date data that I have, which could be weekly, daily, monthly. It's now completed that machine learning model um, running, the execution, and it's given me my recommend ISA data table here. Now I can explore that data segment, and I can see I've got a prediction column here, which is the most important uh, column in this table. The prediction is basically using that collaborative filtering uh, machine learning model that data scientist created and given me a rating for each of my customers and you can see I've got a one I've got one million rows for one million customers and it's given me a rating for each customer between zero and one based on how likely they are to be interested in taking up a new um, rec uh, investment ISA product with us so now using this um, the data has been created within the Magellan environment and it's now accessible to the rest of Magellan as well. If I head back over to my, uh, my dashboard that I was looking at earlier, as a marketing person, I want to be able to leverage the uh, database, the, the data as well as the dashboard here to start creating a new marketing uh, campaign. So I've got a workflow integration icon here and I can select a new campaign for the investment ISA product I can select the data segment that we just created in the, in the data discovery module called the recommend ISA and I can schedule to run this on a periodic basis and I'd like to schedule to run it every day. Uh, now that's run, I can now head over to our AppWorks platform. So AppWorks is our OpenText's own uh, scheduling and workflow um, product but you can integrate into just about any other automation and scheduling or workflow product there is. So you can see the one that I've just run, the investment ISA um, has now been initiated starting today and there's 503 participants in that uh, marketing campaign. Now historically we might have gone out to 10,000 customers or 5,000 customers. So using this machine learning model we've been able to segment our customers into a much smaller uh, customer segment. So we're optimizing our marketing spend, our marketing efforts and we're going out to customers which is going to result in a much more um, higher conversion success rate. At the bottom here we can see various different um, campaigns that we've run previously. So on the left you can see the different names of the campaigns. The size of the bubble shows the success uh, for the conversions and the, you can obviously see the status of these as well. So I just want to focus on the completed ones. And what you can see is there is still varying success between the different campaigns that we've run, the size of the, 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 the bubble. So um, we spoke to our data scientists about this and what, what he mentioned was in a recommendation engine, there's actually two parts to the recommendation engine, two different methodologies. There's the collaborative filtering, which looks at the different products uh, a customer has. And then there's the uh, content filtering, which actually looks at the attributes, the demographic characteristics, and other interesting attributes of customers. So now I can head over to the data discovery module here, where we've got lots of different um, analytics capabilities. So again, as a marketing person, as a business user, not as a data scientist or a coding expert, I've got the ability to um, start exploring my data, but also applying machine learning and other statistical analysis to my, my data as well. So I want to create a profile to understand what makes up my uh, customers who have an investment ISA product so I know what the demographic is that I should be targeting. 
So if I go over to my uh, accounts table, I've got a column called products and I've got my investment ISA product. So I'm going to use that as the baseline that I want to, uh, sorry, as the target segment that I want to understand. And I want to compare this to the investment category as a whole. So I want to understand customers who've got an investment product, any investment product, but they don't have an investment ISA product. I want to know what differentiates them so I can go understand who I should be targeting. So now I can head over to my customer table and start taking some data from that to, to look at does age band make a difference? So the profiling is now analyzing that data for us and it's looking at the attributes, so over the age of 75, age between 30 and 45 and so on. And a star on the right hand side shows us which attributes of that demographic are statistically significant and who we should be targeting for our next marketing campaign for the investment ISA. And I can keep building this up more and more. So I can add children, I can add their gender, uh, their income band and so on. So here I can see that the income band is actually the most interesting or the most significant attribute or, or demographic. So you've got anyone who's got a 35 to 50,000 or 50 to 75,000 income tends to be the uh, demographic that we should be focusing on. Also, everything within this environment is completely um, accessible to the rest of Magellan. So I can publish this out uh, to uh, the other part of uh, Magellan, uh, going back into the, um, the dashboard that we were looking at earlier. Now I can edit this dashboard and I can add that gadget that we've just published from the, the data discovery module that I was just in, the drag and drop interface, directly into this dashboard. So now if I look at the bottom part of the dashboard, I can see on the left hand side, I've got the profiling analysis that we were just looking at, but in a more user friendly, easy to understand chart format. And on the right of that, I've got um, our marketing spend by de demographic, by age band and by income band. So the age, so the income demographic, demographic that I should be targeting is this 35 to 50,000 group. If we actually look at our chart here, the 35,000 to 50 group is the orange bar here. We've actually been decreasing our marketing spend year on year. It's clearly showing me that something we've been doing in our marketing isn't working and we need to change this. Similarly, um, we've actually increased our spend on this purple bar here, the, uh, the 10 to 20,000. You can see it's increased year on year. And that doesn't show up in the profiling at all. So it's telling us that we shouldn't be spending more on that, on that um, income band and we should, we, we should obviously be re refocusing our efforts. So on the back of this high level analysis, we went back to our data scientists and said, look, we found some interesting insights. So what he then did was he created a new machine learning model for us using something called the random forest, which is a classification uh, model. And here he's applied the content filtering, so he's used things like age, uh, band, uh, income bands, uh, gender, whether they're a homeowner, their occupation. And he's created this new machine learning model, which rather than giving a rating out of between zero and one, either tells us whether someone would be interested in the investment ISA product or they wouldn't. So going back to the data discovery model the module, uh, we've actually got the new model here, which is the investment ISA recommendations. So if I load that up, you can see there's quite a few columns that we need to, to actually um, populate here to, to run this machine learning model. But within this interface, we've got a workflow as well. Uh, so we can schedule tasks to run on an automated basis. So for example, we've create, created one previously. This is gonna run every Monday at eight o'clock in the morning. It takes about 30 seconds to run, so it's not gonna affect uh, any, any performance on other users using this. And if I look at the actual action within here, just, there's just one single action, which is to apply this machine learning model. It's gonna save it in the customer database as a new table called investment ISA. So if I head over to the customer table, it's been running for a few days already. So I've got my data set here, the investment ISA. And we've got our prediction column here, which simply shows us whether the customer uh, would be interested in the investment ISA product or not. So you can see there's 19,000 customers who would be interested in this product. Rather than going out to the full data set of 100,000 customers, I can now target just the 19%. So 
you know, saving on 80% of the cost, 80% of the marketing effort and energy, and focus my attention um, just on those customers. So how does this all um, pl play into the, the overall organization? So from a management perspective, I need to be able to demonstrate that investing in AI and machine learning and analytics is actually having a profound impact on our business. Well, historically, we were going out to uh, 100,000, well, we have a pool of 100,000, a million customers in our database. And historically, we were targeting 15% of those, 150,000 customers every single month. Now, with the insights from Magellan using the recommendation engines and the, and the profiling and other analysis, we're only targeting 7.4% of our customers. So there's, there's already, already a reduction in, by more than 50% in our costs um, and marketing effort across all of our products. In addition to that, we can see our conversion rates have gone from 2% to 6.4%. So again, more than a three time, threefold increase. So we're spending half the budget and we're getting more than three times uh, the improvement in conversions. And you can see the revenue generated has uh, not quite doubled, but you know, increased by about 50,000 odd. So we're actually seeing some uh, tangible benefits here, which we can demonstrate to our management that this has been a good investment. Um, at the bottom right here, we can see we've got a word cloud. The word cloud's actually using a Magellan text mining engine to analyze unstructured content from social media, from our uh, customer feedback, and from other customer communications. And we're leveraging machine learning and natural language processing to analyze all of that unstructured content to give us some valuable insights into here to understand what products, what areas, what service areas we need to be focusing on. So I'm going to hand back over to John, who's going to take you through the next part of the demo around the unstructured analytics. Thanks. Thank you. So we wanted to demystify a bit of this text mining because um, as, as we implied, oh, sorry, it's in here. There's a, a lot of unstructured data out there. And being able to make use of that and feed that in as another data source. Uh, so I just wanted to follow a simple example. Um, in order to show it to you, I'm just going to use one of what I, it's called a, just a default UI. So this is, normally you'd be looking at hundreds of text articles being fed through into one system. But for this, we'll just use a single article. I, and I thought we'd just grab something that most people know about. So uh, just an article off the BBC um, on Friends. And I'll just paste that into the engine. Sorry, Chirag's got a really rubbish mouse. I just uh <laughs> okay. So uh, essentially, what would normally happen is it would be just running all of that in a process, and it would result in a number of records being written to a database, and then it's just a regular data source into the rest of our analysis. So what we've uh, got here is just the UI that's showing you some of the things which that text mining engine were able to do. Uh, so we can start by saying that uh, generally speaking, it's got the tonality it believes to be positive. So it's the sentiment of the article. Uh, it's picked up the language is English. Um, we can see what the most negative sentence is and the most positive sentence. We've got a, a high level summary of what the article is. And then we've got these different other topics we can look at. So entities. Now, an entity word cloud, not so useful really when you've only got one article. But if you can imagine you've got hundreds of articles, it then becomes quite useful. Um, I was talking with an insurance company recently. They were looking at how to detect um, organized fraud that was coming into the system and it needs to be quite a quick response and a word cloud is a perfect fit for that. You're, you're taking all of the communications coming in and any word that's occurring more than the norm starts to grow in the word cloud and when you add animation you can start to see these kind of things developing. It's able to pick out people, places, um, and it's doing that by not just simply knowing it's a name, for example, but it's by a natural understanding of the language. So it's, it's not an algorithmic thing. It's actually understanding the language. We've also got concepts. So you can have in here a number of concepts. And we can very highly tune this. And you can put in uh, conditions around those concepts. So if you wanted a concept to be serious crime, it doesn't mean that the document mentioned serious crime. It could be a number of different criteria that it matched such as it had to mention the police, it had to mention uh, the court system in order for it to be counted as a, a serious crime. And then we've got the sim simple concepts here. And then probably the one that gets the most press would be around the sentiment. Um, is it a positive sentiment, negative sentiment? 
um, or is it f uh, fact, opinion, etc. So that's you know just looking at a single document. If you imagine taking all of your communications, all of the written free format documents, uh, you can see how that feeds into the system as a, as a major data source. And then we're just gonna we're gonna go to to, to question time. But what one of the key features with Magellan is this allowing all of the users from these different skill sets to work together on, the, on a single solution. So it's not like a handoff between one team and another, and then you wait a few weeks to get the response to find it didn't match up. This is a, a fully integrated solution. The data scientist can create something, and he presses a button, and it generates a UI on the fly, which is published into the business user interface. So with that, um, do we uh, open up for questions? We do have a pod here. Uh, we're in the, the other area, so if you wanted to come over and speak to us there one-on-one, -on -one, then we're welcome to, to do that.